So hello there everyone and welcome, it is Niran here and today it is time for yet another episode of FIFA 17 Career Mode here with Hull City. Today we are advancing into February, we've just got out of the transfer window and for those that didn't know what happened in the transfer window, it was a very interesting deadline day in comparison to what I was expecting so make sure to go and check that out. But before we get into this video properly, I do apologise for the lack of videos over the last sort of three odd days. Um, obviously it was Christmas so I was quite busy over that period and then also when I got back I didn't exactly have a chance to record for some, for various different reasons, so I apologise for that, but now I'm back and hoping to record consistently, obviously towards the end of this year, uh, then I'll have exams in January, so that'll be a bit difficult, but then I'll be back to being normal again in terms of almost daily uploads from February onwards, it'll be a little bit slower in the month of January, but I mentioned Christmas and I hope you guys had an awesome time over the festive period, you spend some time with your families and stuff, and let me know in the comments section what your favourite gift was that you got. Nevertheless, we're back to three games games per episode for today now that we're out of the transfer window and from the intro you'll have seen we've got another very tough task in Europe. We'll be facing Bayern Munich in the Champions League in game number two of this episode that is sandwiched in between EPL ties against West Ham United and Stoke City. Now I just wanted to quickly take you through a squad report now that we're out of the transfer window just to assess how things are now that we're out of January and I haven't done one of these for a while so you can feel free to pause on any of the players if you want to take a, a, a bit of a more in-depth look at their attributes and stuff. Stuff. We're going to skim through them relatively quickly. Some good growth for Valkvist, Sonjust and Michael Keane. Andrew Robertson's also up plus 2 to 79. Afori is up to 77. Same for Cyprian. Both of those guys were 75 at the start of the season. Kozielo up 1 to an 83. He's looking like he's just going to be such an amazing player even by the end of the season. Leon Bailey as well now an 81. That was uh, at the start of this month. Ha Hernandez there and Antep. Archie Mitchell and Dave Fraser both up to 66 through training. Van Drongel and despite getting relatively relatively limited uh, game time has gone up to a 69 uh, and Didi and Rusnak and Odubarjo all at 1. Snodgrass is the first of the players who's declining, he's down to 74. Will Keane hasn't particularly played, neither has Sam Klukas but still a bit of growth for Keane. Mason's been injured for quite a while but is still at 1 to 77. Charles King and Oscar Lee, more Youth Academy graduates there, Ewan McKinley as well. Josh Tymon is injured at the moment but he's up plus 1 to 63. Shea Adams is up plus 2 actually to 75, that's a new one. Doran Rotaru there is 72. Stefaniak, haven't seen too much growth from him in all honesty this season. He's still been very good, but his growth hasn't really been there. Sardar Moon is now 80 rated as well, so he's joined 80 gang. He's up plus two. Omaruo, our, one of our most recent signings from Chelsea, has already gone up an overall to 79. Uh, Jake Livermore, 76. Diamande with no growth so far. Davies is down one, and then out on loan at the moment is Harry Maguire, because he asked to uh, go out on loan because he wasn't happy at the club. Time for today's first match then, and we're playing West Ham United at KC Stadium in this one. There is the squad in the background. Sardar Moon not into the side just yet because I want to rest him and play him against Bayern Munich. Omaruo is also in for Son Just, and we are of course without the injured Leon Bailey after his sprained ankle at the end of last episode. This should be a tricky way to start things up. West Ham United a very good squad although don't tend to do very well in career modes gen generally as an AI team. We also have the joint best home record in the league at the moment. Only one loss uh, which is pretty damn decent and out of only 11 games. There's one man we're gonna have to keep a uh, keep an eye on Dimitri Paye And that is an injury for Mason. I do believe. Oh my word What in Michael Keane? I know you've just seen your teammate go down injured, but there's no need to literally body slam choke slam WWE style uh, the West Ham attacker. That's to Obiang someone trying to find some space in the middle But we managed to get the ball away and now we can counter Here's Hernandez, that's Stefaniak making a good run over on the left hand side, he can get away with his pace, can he finish though? Yes he can! Marvin Stefaniak gives us the lead on the counter attack, classic whole city goal in this series and the German winner gives us the lead, calm and composed finish. We wouldn't have really seen at the start of his, his journey in this whole city squad. His finishing was always a little bit lacklustre at the start, but that's a good finish past Adrian. I'm sure you all know by now how much I love Marvin Stefania. It's it's really just unhealthy. Now to Hernandez. Robertson's trying to work some space. That's into Stefaniak, who can go for a shot. It's going to fall to Kozielo on the turn. Good save from Adrian. And a lovely take, actually, from Lanzini, who can get the ball out to Jonathan Caleri, 
who caused us havoc when we last played West Ham. And now it's inside to Sam Byram, who's gone past Michael Keane into the box. What a block from Omaruo and punched clear by Mvogo. Sorry, legitimately had to pause that to look at my Facebook messages. I know, I'm so professional. Meanwhile, a four is won the ball. This could be this could be game. This could be a game-changing moment. And Tep's in on goal. Good save from Adrian. Now it's Mason in towards Hernandez again. Now it's Cozielo. Great turn from the Frenchman and blasts it in. It is the usual from Vincent Cozielo. Another goal from the, ma the magician in that number 10 role. He just skips past players like they're not there. He just literally does skimming past his man, little ball roll into the box and blasts it past the goalkeeper. And in that effortless style that he has, he has to put no energy into what he does, but he still does it to the best of his ability. And it is now Hull City 2, West Ham 0. That's out wide to Ayu. Better delivery needed from Ayu, but again it's cleared away, this time by Valkvist. For some reason, Kozielo is trying to get that away. Oh my word, no way. That is insane. Who is that? What a goal from West Ham. Jonathan Caleri has just done the maddest thing I've ever seen. That is incredible. Hats off to the kid. I would applaud, I would applaud even, but I really can't be asked. That is absolutely astonishing. That is a fantastic goal. Flicking it over the head of Kenneth Omaruo. The poor kid had no idea what was going on. That was beautiful. One of the best goals I've seen on this game in this series. And that is half time in this game. It seemed very comfortable for us until a moment of Jonathan Caleri magic. Here come West Ham again. Some good play, good passing play, but it's into the box and it's in the back of the net. And it's that man again. It's Caleri. And this is this is the issue. This kid is just so good as an attacker. And the frustrating thing is as well, we've done such a good job of winning the ball back on the edge of the area. Like that's such a good, oh sorry, in the area. An amazing challenge comes in. I think it was Omaruo. Great tackle comes in. And it just falls straight back to Paye, who then passes it into Caleri. There's not really much we can do about that goal. We're just going to have to accept that one. Anyway, here's Stefaniak looking pretty central in, in all honesty. I don't know why he's... In the, in the middle of the park, but whatever. Mason spraying it out wide to Andrew Robertson. Great ball. That's in towards Kozielo. The header is tame. I genuinely think we're only going to play as well as we are playing if we continue with the squad that we're using right now. Stefaniak's gone past his man brilliantly. Put a ball into the box. It's towards Hernandez. Can he win it in the air? No, he can't. He's taken down at the crucial moment by Vincent Kozielo himself flying in. There's men in the middle. It's Michael Keane who can try and hold on to the ball. He has done. Now it's Mason. Here comes Hernandez bursting into the box. It's Abel Hernandez. It's blocked by Subotic. He gets it on the rebound and puts it under the body of Adrian. It's a horrible goal to score, but it is a goal nonetheless with five minutes to go. It is 3-2 in this match. We've got a bit of luck of our own after the slightly fortuitous goal the West Ham scored. It's another goal for the Uruguayan in this series on the turn. Right, we're going on, we're going on defensive, lads. We're not parking the bus, but we're going defensive. West Ham are going to start chucking everybody at their disposal forward. Slaven Bilic will be on in a minute as a 12th man and they'll chuck him in attack as well. Now it's Paul George and Tep cutting in. He's got runners with him, unless he wants to go alone, but he's brought down. That has to be a foul on from Koyate and Tep goes down injured and they've had to stop the game. Have they? No, it is the end of the game. It is full time here at the KC Stadium and we come out victorious against West Ham. Abel Hernandez comes out with man of the match after an absolutely ridiculous game in all honesty. Kozielo with an 8.7, Stefaniak with an 8.5, Robertson with an 8.6 and Mason with an 8.52. Also, Paul George and Tet with a uh, sprained ankle. Out for three weeks. I am so shocked by this revelation. New set of players then being trained in the month of February. Doran Rataru, Sardar Asmoon, Ivan Mvogo and Marvin Stefaniak are getting the training treatment. Uh, the likes of Ndidi, Fraser, Cyprien and Afori, who'd all been being trained before, are getting a month off for now. Is this some kind of sick joke? Not only have I got to play Bayern Munich, but I'm seeing Mesa Ozil on the right-hand side in a Bayern Munich kit as well. On top of that, we're out uh, we're without even both of our wingers, Leon Bailey and Paul George and Tep for this game, both out with sprained ankles. Here we are once again in a Champions Cup, aka the Champions League. And yet again, we've been dealt absolutely horrendously in terms of the team that we're playing. Bayern Munich await us 
in the last 16. I feel like Arsenal right now. I feel like Bayern Munich exclusively play English teams in the round of 16. Here's the rest of the Bayern Munich squad and it's obviously pretty damn strong. They've got uh, Manuel Neuer in goal, so no Sven Ulreich like we had in the numbers game. Hummels and Boateng, probably the most difficult centre-half partnership we've had to come across so far. We've got the dream partnership, if you like, from the first half of the season in centre-back again for this game, being Son Just and Michael Keane. That is a shocking loss of the ball, though, from Ndidi. is back to, I think that was Vidal. And, well, we almost pressed the self-destruct button very early on there. Good effort from the Chilean defensive mid. Ooh, Ruznak almost bringing out some skills and going past Alaba, but of course it is David Alaba. We've got to remember that now. Douglas Costa is away down the left-hand side, into the box for Muller, and that is goal number one for Bayern Munich into the bottom corner from Thomas Muller, and we have been punished. And Vogo can't get there. No one's really marking Muller in the box, which is suicidal in the first place. We're struggling to keep up with the pace here of Bayern Munich. David Alaba getting very lucky with that first touch, but it's won back by Ndidi. Now to Asmoon. This is a great opportunity for a counter-attack, actually. It's out wide to Marvin Stefaniak. Get on your bike, Sonny Jim. Asmoon is in support. Put it in the back of the net, Sarah. He has. It is 1-1 in this game. A, a pretty sweaty square, to be quite honest with you, from Stefaniak to find Asmoon. And we are back level in this one. And really, Bayern Munich have done exactly the same as what we did. Give away an unnecessary goal from a good-looking position. And even Man well, Neuer can't get on the end of that one to save it, and we are back level in this one. Bayern really chucking just too many players forward. I was quite surprised at how simple that was to get three on one. Bayern coming forward now with David Alaba, who's got some space in the middle, but he's been challenged by Michael Keane. Now to Valkvist. This is Kozielo on his weak foot, goes for the shot, but a good save from Manuel Neuer. Ball towards the near post, towards Asmoon, flipped on, but only as far as Robin. A four, he's won that, though, in a very dangerous position for Bayern Munich. They put a ball into the box, yes, he can, towards the back post, and Ndidi is bouncing around, and Ndidi puts it in on the half volley. It's a scramble, but it's a goal nonetheless for ourselves. And we are 2-1 up, we've brought it back from 1-0 down. Alaba couldn't get it away, Neuer couldn't claim it, and Ndidi, with the maddest technique you'll see in 2016, pokes the ball in. And Onyinye Ndidi, who scored important goals in the past in Europe, got that last-minute goal against Roma in the group stages. He's done it again here. Bayern Munich change at half-time. Thiago Alcantara coming on for Xabi Alonso, so two Spaniards swapping places on the pitch. Arguably, Thiago Alcantara at this point in the career mode is probably a lot more dangerous. Kimmich coming on for Ozil, interestingly. That's a strange one. Defensive, sort of well-known, anyway, midfielder for a number 10. Nevertheless, ball there into the box for Hummels, who puts the ball wide. That was a great chance for Bayern to get back on level terms. And now it's Robertson here down the left-hand side to Stefani. A great little turn to get away from his man. He sees Asmoon there in the centre as well. There's another pass out wide. It's Albert Rusnak who can convert and put it into the top corner to make it 3-1 in this game. Albert Rusnak has been lively in this one and he scores against Bayern Munich in the Champions League to make it 3-1 and all created by some great work down the left hand side from Stefaniak. The pass over to Asmoon who has the awareness to find Albert Rusnak who blasts it into the top corner, no chance for even a goalkeeper like Manuel Neuer. Bayern still chucking absolutely everyone forward. Very, very fortuitous bobble there. And it's come to Stefaniak, who can try and cut in. He's got support again. It's over to Ruznak again, who almost scores. I would have preferred that to go to Kozielo. We are very close now to doing the impossible. We have, we have finished the game off. It is a 3-1 win at home against Bayern Munich, and that is a very, very good result to take to the Allianz Arena. Sardar Moon then gets man of the match with a 9.1 rating. Really good ratings as well for Stefaniak, Albert Rusnak, Onyinyi Ndidi, Michael Keane, and Andrew Robertson. Now, on top of that, we've also got some new Youth Academy players into the squad. We promoted them, or we offered them contracts recently, and they've now accepted those contracts, and they're in the senior side. We've got John Fagan, 
Hogan here, who is a goalkeeper. We've also got Darren Brennan here. You can see his attributes down the right-hand side. His best attributes are agility and ball control, 70 dribbling and 70 balance as well. So he's actually a very good dribbler of the ball. Riley Hamilton, our new Scottish fullback, can play on both sides of fullback as well as a left-back or a right-back with high defensive work rate, which is quite nice. And then I do believe the final player we've promoted is this guy, John Feeney. Highest overall, he's 60 rated already. Okay, slight change up in plan. We were meant to be playing a Premier League tie against Stoke to end up this episode. We've actually had our games rescheduled. So now we're playing an FA Cup tie against Chelsea. We obviously beat Ipswich last episode in the fourth round and we've got Chelsea in the fifth round. You can see the squad in the background. It's still pretty strong, very strong midfield in Kozielo and Didi and Cyprien. But there are still a few youngsters in the likes of Androngelen and Rotaru, Shea Adams up front and also Feeney, the new right back straight up from the Youth Academy gets his debut against Chelsea in the FA Cup at right back. So we return to the KC Stadium for a third time actually in this episode. Every single game's been at home in this one. Hopefully they are also using this competition as a chance to rotate the squad slightly um, in comparison to the league. Obviously, you know, the FA Cup is still a very important trophy. It's a trophy that everyone wants to win. Um, but it's also a chance to give some youngsters a chance traditionally and hopefully Chelsea are carrying on that tradition. But check out Chelsea's squad. That is basically as strong as it could possibly, well not quite as strong as it could possibly be, but it's pretty strong. Out to Willian again, clearly targeting him. Seems an interesting tactic given we've got a 60 overall fullback on the other side of the pitch that they're aiming at. Odu Barjo, but fair enough. Each to their own, I guess. Again, Chelsea coming down this side. It's just, it just seems to make no sense to me. I mean, I might get proved wrong eventually, but Chelsea have got Eden Hazard down the other side against the 60 overall Youth Academy right back. As Hazard finds Costa now into Mikel, and that looked like a surefire goal, if not for a great save from David Marshall. And that all came from Feeney versus Hazard. It's back to Willian, who's got some support, but he's also got Keane for company. But Keane can't win the ball back off him. Now it's Matic. Van Drongelen can't get there either, but again, good save from Marshall, who's certainly had his gloves warmed by all the action going on in this game so far. That's Hazard bringing down Feeney. Here comes Hazard down this left-hand side. He's got Feeney for company. He's not the slowest of customers, to be fair, is Feeney, and he's hassled him so much that the Belgian can't keep it in play. Good work from the Scottish fullback. Chelsea are very, very strong at the back. Like, I mean, it's no surprise, really, is it? We're talking about Chelsea. In real life, they are equally as, as solid, but in this game, they are another level of defensive capabil uh, capabilities as John Obi Mikel shrugs off his man, finds the Chelsea attacker, and how lucky are we going to get? Goodness gracious me, that was an incredible effort from Diego Costa. The luck is real for us, and now Shea Adams is through. Can he cut inside? Yes, he can. Shea Adams to try and give us the lead. It's blocked by the goalkeeper, and Rotaru can't keep the volley down. Only as far as Odu Barjo. That is an injury. Oh, no. Oh, no, you did not. Not in an FA Cup tie of no relevance whatsoever. Vincent cozielo has gone down injured. This, no. I don't know. I can't get behind this movement. I can't get behind this movement. Right, I don't know what we're going to do here because it's the 69th minute. You know what? Go big or go home. We, we did this before against City and it worked an absolute treat. So let's go for the 4-2-4 because I feel like this is another one of those games where I'm doing well in central midfield so we can sacrifice a central midfielder. We just need another attacker. So the injuries keep a-flowing. Leon Bailey, Paul George and Tepe and now Vincent Cozielo all out injured. Oh, here's a run being made. This is Hernandez throwing goal. Can he score? Oh my god, that is the most weak shot I've ever seen. I actually put a decent amount of power on that as well. But it's looking promising. We're getting, you know, we're getting into a position now where we're actually getting some pretty decent attacks and on a regular basis. Shea Adams, but can't. But Shea Adams has won that in an amazing position. Right, this is the chance. This is the chance. It's Shea Adams over to Hernandez, who loses the ball. I just needed you to pass it over to Doran Rotariu. Chelsea just aren't able to keep hold of the ball at the moment. Hernandez trying to go for a pass again. Rotariu was open on the left-hand side. Or right-hand side even. Stop giving the ball away, Hernandez, for the love of God. But Abel Hernandez just giving the ball away constantly. And then three other opportunities to get into, go into goal-scoring positions. Wasted them all, and now Eden Hazard's free, and Archie Mitchell with an incredible block. Marcos Alonso, though, will swing it in towards Costa. It's nodded on at the near post. Only as far as Van Yinkel, who will get there, try and put it in, but it's blocked by Michael Keane. Only as far as Matic, back to Van Yinkel, into Willian, who's in space. Now Costa, who finds the back of the net. 
And that is it. That's it. Game, set, and match. Costa's got the goal. I, there's, the ref will blow the whistle imminently because, I mean, real time, we've got about five minutes of injury time, let alone two. I won't be annoyed at that because I know Chelsea were attacking during that entire time period, so it's not as if the ref could just blow his whistle at that time. I'm more annoyed at the fact that we should have won this game due to tactics and the chances we had at the end, and we haven't. We've squandered it and we are out of yet another domestic cup competition, this time at the hands of Chelsea. Good ratings for Cyprien and Keane, but it's, it's Odubarjo who gets man of the match. Player injured, Corzielo has dislocated his shoulder and will be out for eight weeks. It's not as bad as it could have been, but it's still pretty bad. We're not going to see him until at least the second week of April. That is bad. That's bad. Like, we're only going to get Cozielo back with about six games of this league season to go. It's a disappointing way then to end the episode with that injury to Cozielo and going out of the FA Cup, but at least we are two points clear of City in the league and with a game in hand as well. In the background, though, you can see that the Hall of Fame is ever changing in terms of the stats. Abel Hernandez adding to his goal scoring list uh, or tally, although should have added once more to it in the FA Cup. Vincent Cozielo is still there in terms of appearances, but I think he'll lose that record to the likes of Andrew Robertson. Nevertheless, that is basically the end of this episode here of Hull at City Career Mode on FIFA 17. It's been an emotional roller coaster, in all honesty, from start to finish in all of the games that we've played, but it's been an enjoyable one nonetheless. If you have enjoyed the video, then of course, feel free to smash the likes button. The support on this series is still pretty damn decent, so I've got to thank you guys ever so much for that, given it's, it's now December, so awesome to see that sort of stuff. Again, hope you guys had an awesome Christmas, and again, just thanks for the support on the channel overall. So close to 25,000 subscribers now. If you are new to the channel and you want to help me get to 25k, then make sure to subscribe by hitting that little red button under the video, and comment about enjoying the video if you enjoyed it that much. It's been a pleasure ranting at you guys today. Have a great day, enjoy yourselves, and goodbye. I've got noise.